week we're doing a, a special series of shows. Our theme is really from a line that I read a long time ago from Thomas Jefferson to his nephew Peter Carr. He said, question with boldness even the very existence of God, for if there be a God, he must surely rather honest questions over blindfolded fear. I don't know how many answers I'll give you this week, but I will raise many questions. And so far, we haven't had in the silence is deafening. Oh, sure, they're tearing me apart, but none of the facts. Write what you learn on this show down. Write these questions down and demand answers. Because it's not a my America that we're talking about here, it's all of ours. Left, right, Democrat, Republican, all of our freedom of speech is on the ropes. And questioning your government is not only important, it is in a democratic republic, which I think we still have, it is required of you. Freedom of speech is under attack. Tomorrow night, I'm going to show you the thugs and the army that is being built right under our noses. Now, joining me on the phone is radio talk show host, Mr. Rush Limbaugh. Mr. Rush? Glenn Beck, how are you, sir? Very good, sir. Um, I, I, want to, I want to play something for you. I don't know if you just saw it, but I want to play it again. This is the new diversity officer for the FCC a newly created position. This is what he said um, at, a, uh, at a speech or talk he was given about Chavez, Venezuela and how the media worked down there. Watch this. In Venezuela, Chavez uh, really had an incredible revolution, democratic revolution, to begin to put in place things that were going to have an impact on the people of Venezuela. The property owners and the folks who were then controlling the media in Venezuela here in the U.S. government, um, worked to oust him, but he came back in another revolution, and then Chavez began to take very seriously media in this country. Rush, I find that breathtaking. I find the whole administration breathtaking, Glenn. I mean, you're, you're doing... Uh great job this whole week. Uh, I, mean, I saw Sarah Palin even tweeted about what you're doing, urging people to watch. This whole administration is as, is as radical and far left as uh, any that the country has ever had. And what they're trying to do here to communications is simply stifle dissenting voices. They're trying to wipe out any opposition. If you look at Barack Obama and his uh, track record as a politician, it is to clear the playing field. He doesn't even like debating his opponents. He just wants to get rid of them. And uh, this, this diversity czar comes from a, a, a fringe, radical, Saul Alinsky uh, type of background. And the things that he's talking about doing, and I watched your show for the first half hour today, the things that he's talking about doing to shut down radio are simply un-American. Not, it's, it's not, not about to say that it's not constitutional. It's simply un-American. And make no bones about it, folks. Uh, Glenn is right when, when, when I think he's maybe underselling a little bit about as far as their intentions are concerned. The stimulus plan, Glenn, look at what they're doing to the U.S. economy. Anybody in a, with, a, with a sense of economic literacy would know this is not how you create jobs. You do not rebuild the private sector. This is being done on purpose. All of these disasters are exactly what Obama wants. The more crises, the better, the more opportunity for government to say, let us in and fix the problem. And uh, with the, his, his number one opposition is on radio and Fox News. His number one opposition is on radio. They can't go fairness doctrine because it's too obvious. So they're trying to do this backdoor route with diversity and ownership, the 100% tax on operating in order to pay uh, public radio because they're supposedly fair. It's insidious. But I don't think it's going to work in the end because the American people are too informed, Glenn. They're too aware of it. Their radio uh, means too much to them. Their, their free speech, freedom in general, means way too much to them. And just as they're fighting back on, uh, on, on health care and a number of other things, so will they fight back on this. Rush, um, tomorrow on this program, I'm going to lay out the case of the army that they are building right underneath our, own, our, our nose, and an army that he spoke about on the campaign trail. Um, and I, I, if you watch the, what can only be called um, the organization's uh, or the administration's organ, um, anything involved with GE or NBC, you've got now Jeffrey Immelt on the board of uh, the Federal Reserve. You have him in the Oval Office consulting not only on health care but the financial situation. And they are an organ. If you watch MSNBC 
I contend that you will see the future because they are laying the ground for a horrible event that will be is what they're laying the ground for anything from the right there some awful event and I fear this government this administration has so much framework already prepared that they will seize power overnight before anybody even gives it a second thought. Well, I think I think because of uh, uh, what you're doing with your television show, your radio show, what we're all doing here, I don't think they're going to be able to seize it overnight without anybody knowing about it. And you talk about the organized groups that they've got. Um, if you, let's look at the health care situation, what's happening right now. The genuine passion, the real passion, is in individual Americans' hearts and minds. Individuals are showing up. They may be going to the web to find out where these town halls are, but they're showing up because individually they don't want any part of this. The Obama army has to be bought and paid for. The Obama yeah. army has to be given marching order. The Obama army is not showing up with any passion for Obama's issue, which is health care. They're showing up because they've been instructed to by bosses. Now, they, 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 this army that you're going to reveal tomorrow is probably going to be much the same way. And I'm going to tell you something, Glenn. Passion, love of country, I know. truth is going to outmaneuver and overpower fake passion trumped up people who are just given marching orders and, and, and sent out to act in a certain way. Uh, I, I really, I'm, you know, I, I, we may be looking at Barack Obama destroying the Democrat Party. It's too soon to say that now, but we may be looking at that happen. There are reasons for optimism, but you're right. It is a dangerous time. It's the most dangerous time in my life for freedom and liberty in this country. I, I, I will tell you, um, a lot of people would say, well, that's Rush Limbaugh, he's, you know, this is hyperbole, et cetera, et cetera. Would you agree with me, uh, Rush, that this is not, this is not conservatives or Republicans or independents talking about this because they don't like Rush, uh, they don't like um, uh, Barack Obama. These are Americans. I'm an American. I'm speaking to you as an American. This is bad for anyone unless you're in the power circle. You, you. You don't want to go down this road with what they're proposing with the FCC. No, and uh, well, I don't want to go down the road with anything you're proposing on anything, Glenn. And it's, it, you, but you ask an interesting question. You know, people going to react to you or me simply because, well, it, it's hyperbole. It's what these guys do. I, uh, my, my first hour yesterday was chronicling how this man is systematically dismantling our ability to gather intelligence to protect ourselves against an attack. He is purposely using his attorney general to make the United States the villain of the world. And I'm going to tell you, folks, uh, from the bottom of my heart, I am uncomfortable thinking and saying these things about a man who's been elected president of the United States. It is terribly upsetting and disconcerting, and I wish I didn't think it, and I wish I didn't have to say it. But it's, there, there's, there's no way to sugarcoat it. This is not politics as usual. This is not left versus right. This is not Republican versus Democrat. This is statism, totalitarianism versus freedom. And if these people are allowed to go where they want to go unchecked, then some people, a lot of people, I don't think half the country, but close, will wake up one day and find, my God, what the hell happened? Because this is not what they voted for. They had no intention of this. They thought they were getting something entirely different. And it is, uh, it's, it's a responsibility that we all have, being honest and, uh, and earnest, to inform people of what these possibilities are, because they are very real. More with Rush Limbaugh next.